Welcome folks to Rocket Science 101. Today we're going to derive the rocket equation that tells us how much propellant, how much fuel we need to carry for a given delta V or a given amount of mass. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's say we have a spacecraft. Here's our rocket. Now, our rocket has some mass. Let's say m. That's the mass of our rocket. And our rocket is moving at some velocity v. Now, our rocket is carrying fuel, right? It's carrying some amount of fuel that I'm going to show you in brown. So here's the fuel that my rocket is carrying. Now, of course, after the rocket ejects the fuel out of its fuel tank, what's going to happen? This is before, this is after. After the rocket ejects its fuel, it's going to lose some mass. It's going to lose a little amount of mass, let's call it dm. Okay, so the new mass of the rocket is going to be m minus dm. Now, since the rocket has lost some mass, and this mass has gone out this way, the rocket is going to gain some velocity. In fact, its new velocity is going to be v plus delta v. But remember, that's only because of this ejected gas, this dm that went out the other way. This dm, of course, has its own velocity. Its velocity is going to be the velocity of the rocket minus the exhaust velocity. That's how fast it comes out of the back. Okay, now what we want to do is use the conservation of momentum to get a sense of what's really happening in this dynamical system. So we're going to use the conservation picture what's happening before before we've just got the rocket with a mass m moving with a velocity v so we're just going to have m v okay that's equal to what well that's equal to the mass of the rocket the new mass is m minus d m times the new velocity v plus dv don't forget about the gas that has a mass of dm and a velocity of v minus v exhaust now we're going to go ahead and simplify this. On the left hand side we have mv. On the right hand side, let's go ahead and distribute. We have m times v that gives us mv. We have m times dv that gives us plus m times dv. We have minus v times dm. And finally we have minus dm dv. Minus dm times dv. We also have plus v dm so plus v times dm and minus v exhaust times delta mass okay it's time for some cancellation okay first things first mv and v chopping out when you multiply something very small mass and very small velocity that's essentially zero we can approximate that okay what else we got we have minus vdm plus vdm those things are going to cancel out and so we're left with something quite simple here m dv equals v exhaust dm so the mass of the rocket times delta v equals v exhaust times dm i'm going to go ahead and move m to the other side so i have delta v is v exhaust over my mass times dm. Okay, so now let's use our calculus abilities to go ahead and integrate both sides. Left hand side, we're integrating with respect to v, and we're going from the launch pad v sub i to the end of our journey as soon as we reach the end of the atmosphere v sub f. Here we're going from m sub i to m sub f since we're integrating with respect to m. 
And so now let's see what we get right here. I'm gonna use my green chalk right here. So what do we have on the left hand side? Well, this is pretty easy. This is just V and this is VF minus VI, right? And VI, we're assuming it starts from rest. Maybe I should write that down. This is starting from rest, okay? Uh, really, we're thinking about starting from rest on the, the surface of the earth to reaching the top of the atmosphere, okay? Here's the top of the atmosphere. Hopefully you can see that, okay? So what do we have here on the left-hand side? We have V sub F equals, on the right-hand side, one over M, if you integrate that, well, that's just the natural log, or just log of M, right? So we're gonna have what? We're gonna have log of M from M sub I to M sub F, okay? And multiply that by V sub E, or I can go ahead and bring V sub E to the other side. And so if I go ahead and simplify this, what do I have? And so if I go ahead and simplify this, what do I have? On the ratio of the final velocity of the rocket when it reaches the atmosphere to the exhaust velocity, which is about four kilometers per second, I believe, equals ln of m, ln of the final mass minus ln of the initial mass of our rocket. And now we can go ahead and simplify that. Let me go ahead, use the color red to signify we're almost there. And so now, what do we have here? We're gonna have the ratio of the final velocity to the exhaust velocity is equal to ln of the final mass to the initial mass. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your rocket equation. And what this tells you is basically that you need to carry about 93% fuel in a rocket. The other 7%, well, that's the actual astronauts. That's the cargo. That's the payload. But 90% of almost every rocket is fuel. That's what this equation is telling you. Thanks for watching. We'll check you out next time. Ian Betton plus MKO plus scaffolding equal learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.